Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode here at Just Stolen. Uh, today we're going to be playing some more Higurashi When They Cry Ho, Chapter 1, Onikakushi. Uh, Onikakushi Hen, Onikakushi. I'm not sure. These titles, man. I really like these games, but man, these uh, these titles, man. Because <laughs> this is a remake of the original one, which I believe is called Onikakushi Hen, and it's like, mm, I don't know if I should be saying hen or not. Someone let me know if you actually know that, please. <laughs> Just for the sake of my curiosity. Anyway, uh, I hope you all are excited. Um, I'm excited to get back to this. It's been like two days. I had some rec other recording and other things that needed to get done, but I'm excited to be back playing the game again. Um, it's not going to have been two days for you guys. It'll have been the normal like one day with our current schedule, but you know, whatever. Anyway, let's just uh, let's jump right in. I, I want to I wanna continue. <clears throat> as soon as the club activities were finished, Rena flew off. Probably so she could go dig out that cute Colonel Sanders that she wasn't able to take home yesterday. So today it was just Mion and me walking home together. A rather rare occurrence. Mountain of treasure, huh? The guys throwing it away probably never thought in the wildest dreams that Rena would be grateful to him. Mountain of treasure meaning that damn construction site from before. Thanks for the clarification, KG. I had no idea what you were talking about. Oh right, Mion would probably tell me. That murder by dismemberment that seemed to have happened there. Over there, you know, at that damn construction site. Did something happen there? Long ago? Something sure did. A grand battle. There were sit-ins and demonstrations. It was a bit different from what I wanted to hear, but I decided I'd listen just the same. It was our land that was going to be sunk in the damn reservoir. I, I would have fought as well, probably. Oh wait, that was me. Damn it. The government guys were really adamant about it. Acting all big and full of themselves. Since they figured out that they couldn't settle it with money, they did a bunch of nasty shit. They were nasty people. Mion spoke excitedly, as if the whole thing was happening right in front of her. Oh, sorry. I'll make sure to be more excited. I'm amazed you guys won. You were facing the federal government, right? The mayor and prominent figures in the village all signed petitions. They went to Tokyo and struck deals with legislators, and as a result, the development plan was retracted. It was our complete victory! <laughs> there wasn't any... Violence, was there? Like assaults, murders? None. She promptly cut me off. The same as Rena had. Her words signaled the end of discussion. None. <laughs> Tomitake-san said, uh, one arm wasn't found in the incident. I thought that a murder by dismemberment had occurred, but I guess I was wrong. My curiosity unsated, I sighed dejectedly on the inside. Later. See you tomorrow. Okay, John. You can't wash that off until you get home, got it? I got it, I won't. Mion held back her laughter while stealing glances at my face. I wonder what kind of nasty doodles they drew. Damn you, Mion. You shall rue this day. If our roles are ever reversed, I'm going to slop it right on. All over your... <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. All over your face so you won't be able to take it off, even with a scouring pad. Upon arriving home, I ran straight into my mom, embarrassing myself yet again. Oh, you're that. Well, definitely. I've actually been in his shoes before. Um, real quick story time. When I was in high school, I lost a bet. And someone drew all over my face exactly like that and made me uh, not wash it off until I get home. And I didn't because I'm a man. And I can handle it. I got home and my mom was like, what the fuck is that on your face? And I looked in the mirror and it was just... <laughs> it was... All kinds of things. <laughs> All kinds of inappropriate things. And I was like, I lost a bet, Mom. I don't know what you want. And she's like, hmm. 
all right, go get in the shower and wash that off right now. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> and that's my story. <laughs> I don't even remember what the bet was, though. That's the thing. I just remember that it happened to me, so I can really... The mood I'd come home to was already on edge. It's not an uncommon thing in our family. Whenever Dad can't come up with a good idea, it always ends up like this. He stomps around the house with his arms crossed. Mom whispered into my ear. Walk him home, Keiichi. Dad, he's in a bit of a rut right now, so don't bother him, okay? He can't come up with a new idea? It's because the deadlines are so close together this time. Your dad needs the time to recharge or it doesn't work as well. Dad's paintings feed our entire family. If he runs out of ideas, then it's the end of the Mayabaras. We've never gone hungry before. Could it be that my dad is actually a master painter? Wouldn't it be easier to get an idea taking a walk outside rather than wandering around the house? Whoops. The theme of the piece this time is that in the household, so it seems your dad wants to use this house as a motif. That's quite a bothersome motif. <laughs> Keiji, pick up your room, it looks terrible! S sorry I'll clean it up later. Aw, oh, come on, don't use my room as the motif. Keiji, there's still some time before dinner, so please go take a walk out- oh, that's mom. Keiji, there's still some time before dinner, so please go take a walk out back or something. No, that was him. God damn it. Whatever. His bad mood is only temporary. As soon as he gets an idea, his mood improves and he starts humming. Till then, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just go take a walk, so don't aggravate him further. Well, I guess I will then. I said I was going to take a walk, but I didn't have any particular destination in mind. I just needed to kill some time. I got on my bike and pondered where to go. I could just go read at the bookstore, but it would take about an hour by bike to get to town. Excuse me. It would be dark by the time I got back, so I didn't want to go unless I had to. The roads at night here in Hinamizawa creep me out. If Mion or Satoko ever found out about that, I smiled wryly. Oh yeah, Rena was probably still at the Mountain of Treasure, the damn construction site. The excavation of Colonel Sanders was probably taking her a while, it wouldn't be so bad to have her only one. She might return the favor next time we have club activities. With a little bit of self-interest in mind, I set off toward the damn construction site. Tomitake's son might be there as well. The only person with information about the incident that both Ren and Mion denied knowing anything about. If I met him again, I'd like to ask him for more details. To ask, is there really a dismemberment here in Inemizawa? That was my real intention. Well, no shit, Keiichi. I think we all gathered that. <laughs> I, I quite like this art. I don't mind it at all. I spotted Rena struggling up the, on the slope of the garbage pile. It looked like Colonel Sanders was lodged in there pretty firmly. It didn't look like Rena would be able to excavate him by herself. Realizing that Tomitake-san wasn't around, I began climbing up the slope unsteadily. Hey, Rena! Looks like you're working up a sweat over there. Whoa, whoa, Keiji-kun! What brings you to a place like this? A place like this, huh? Oh, a place like this, huh? I see. She was aware of it, at least. <laughs> I received a signal for emergency assistance at the accident site. Where is the injured party? Huh? Huh? Accident? Huh? But there was a report Colonel Sanders was buried alive in this trash pile. Huh? Oh, oh, that. You scared me. Don't frighten me like that, keiji -kun. I was just kidding. I thought you might be struggling by yourself, so I came to help you out. Huh? You came for me? Huh? Well, I filled my quota for today. 
If I don't see Rena blush at least once a day, then I'm not getting my daily required nutritional intake. Just, <laughs> Just kidding, you're embarrassing me now. So, huh? What part was the joke? What part was it? I just ignored her bewilderment. Okay, now move out of the way. So where is this, Colonel Sanders? Ah, so, so, sorry. Can't you see him in that gap? Yeah, wow, he's really buried in there. But Colonel Sanders was sideways, surrounded by boards and other construction materials like they were caging him inside. According to Rena, it wasn't like this yesterday. It seems as though another illegal dumper came yesterday, dumped again, and now he's buried like this. You're trying to move this pile all by yourself? With those scrawny arms? There's no way she'd be able to do that with her slender arms. Although she is able to, like, kung fu knock us on our ass. <laughs> but Colonel Sanders is so cute. There's a chain on the Colonel Sanders at the store. This one, though. I should be able to take this one home. Oh. If Rena gave up on this Colonel Sanders, she'll probably start devising a plan to steal the one in front of the store. As her guardian, I won't allow her to sully her hands with crime. Out of the way, I'll do it. Rena blushed again, but this time I left it alone. The pile was enormous. Also, the more days we wasted, the more likely another illegal dumping would occur. If it got buried any deeper, there'd be nothing that could be done. Keichikun, I'll help too. Let me help. You just get in the way. Stay back. <laughs> Pulling out scraps, bending them, tossing them aside. I quickly became covered in sweat and dust. Yeah, that sounds about right. Probably like green juice, oozing green slime, other things as well. I mean, it's, it's a fucking dump. Flying objects drew beautiful arcs across the twilight sky, twilight sky, one after another. Lumber, timber, plywood... Damn it! No matter how much I threw out, there was still more. Even though I could see Colonel Sanders right there. I love that it's Colonel Sanders of all people. After grandstanding like that in front of Rena, I felt frantic because of how little I had progressed. If I was going to do this seriously, I'd need an axe or saw or something. He says out loud. That's enough, keiichi -kun. You're so sweaty. You don't have to try so hard. I'm just doing it for you, Rena. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Rena begins sputtering and turns beet red. Oh, whoops. I meant I was trying to say I was doing my best just to keep her from becoming a criminal. Oh well. I don't think that's true. I think you just enjoy doing that to her. And you're shy about coming out about it. I guess I just need a break. This is pretty tough. <laughs> I sprawled on my... Yeah, Colchester? I sprawled on my back over the grassy slope. I'm so sorry. You're still covered in sweat. Rena patted her handkerchief against my forehead. Felt pretty nice. Uh, um, well, wait here a minute, okay? My house is pretty close. I'll bring you some barley tea, okay? Leaving the handkerchief on my forehead, Rena took off running. The cries of the Higurashi gently cooled the air. Yeah? After I was certain that Rena was gone, I picked myself up and headed towards what I'd discovered earlier. That was a garbage pile of magazines and newspapers bound up in twine. Unless I'm mistaken, I believe it was around here. There it was. There were bound stacks of not-so-reputable tabloids. They were stacked chronologically, going back quite a few years. It was quite a disturbing incident. It seems they haven't been able to find one of the arms, you see. Oh, right, that was him. If it was just as Tomotake-san said, then undoubtedly there would be mention of the murder. These are troubled times. There's no end to these sickening incidents. There's a large part of society drawn in by these incidents as well. So it had to be recorded. Somewhere. I unfastened the packages and opened the rain-soaked pages carefully, looking over the table of contents. Not here. Next one. Not here. Next one. It was hard to search since I didn't know when it happened. I didn't know who the perpetrator or the victim was, either. I only knew it had happened here. 
I looked up every so often, checking to see if Renna had come back or not. I wouldn't want her to see me gawking at a dirty magazine, but it wasn't just that. Both Renna and Mion said they didn't know, but it had happened without a doubt. As long as Toki Tomitaki-san wasn't lying, then if both Ren and Mion... Ah, yeah, there was... Wait. Then if both Ren and Mion... Ah. Yeah, there was. If they had just said that, then I wouldn't have gotten so hung up on it. I don't know why that was so hard to wrap my head around. I was like, what is... I I'm like, I couldn't understand that line for some reason. An incident that neither Rena nor Mion wished to talk about, trying to uncover it after they tried to conceal it out of good intentions. That made me feel like I was acting against my friends. This music! That music, that music was like, creepy. Hinemizawa dam worker lynching. Murder by dismemberment. Here it is. The featured article was in the back, and it seemed that there was a photograph in the colored pages on the front. The pages of the featured article were stuck together and weren't easy to open. Rena could return at any moment. Feeling rushed, they gave up and opened the photograph page. Police investigators were carrying a body bag and newspaper reporters were all bathing it in camera flashes. The image was blurry and hard to understand, but I could definitely make out the headlines. A tragic nightmare at the Hinamanzawa construction site, lynching and murder slash dismemberment. The victim was the site foreman. He had assaulted his assailants daily with an explosive backlash from his daily actions. It's a horrible image to see the site foreman as it happened. It really did happen. It seems the details are on the next page. I turned the page without pausing. On it was... The assailants butchered the victim's body with hatchets and pickaxes. Then he used an axe to split the cadaver into six pieces, the head, arms, legs, and torso. I could understand just from the headline that it was just too terrible an incident. Normally a lynching is just assault and murder, right? Dismemberment with hatchets and pickaxes? That wasn't a lynching. It was a merciless killing to the letter, a brutal murder. Done by a group of people. Hatchets. With pickaxes. With an axe. I'm gonna guess that's Rena. Ah! <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> eh! Uh, so, so, so sorry. Did I start? Oh no, wait. That was Keiichi. Ah! Nailed it. Eek! So, so sorry. Did I startle you? Did I startle you? Rena dropped the axe she was holding onto the grass after being startled by my voice. Oh. Kiichi kun you see, earlier you, you you had said it would help if you had an axe, didn't you? So 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 I, I brought the axe for you from the shed. Rena fluttered her arms in a panic, continuing to, continuing to explain and apologize. It seemed I had been glaring at her pretty intensely. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I guess my reaction was a bit overboard. No, I'm I'm sorry as well. I'm sorry. Night was drawing close. Oops. I keep doing that. It's pretty worn out, and it wouldn't hurt to do the rest tomorrow. Doesn't look like we could break that last beam without an axe. Brought it after all. I'll have to borrow it tomorrow. All right. Okay. Why do you look so glum? Tomorrow we'll be digging out Colonel Sanders, right? You're right. <laughs> I really want to take Colonel Sanders home soon. We both knew that that blah, blah, blah. we both knew that it was useless to apologize any more than that. I quenched my thirst with the barley tea Rena brought and wiped off the sweat that had now gone cold. We took the path to head home. I felt quite guilty about the tabloid wrapped up in my jacket. Well. I remember that from the anime. Mostly, anyway. Ooh. You've received new tips. Hinema Zawa Dam Project and Special Tabloid Report. One man's trash, huh? We got an achievement for that? 
Okay. View new tips. Let's go ahead and read one. October 1975. In accordance with the Prime Minister's bulletin number XXX, Hinamizawa's electrical development master plan was announced. The vast scope of the projected Hinamizawa Dam will have an incredibly heavy impact on the village of Hinamizawa. The flooded area caused by the Hinamizawa Dam would include the five areas of Hinamizawa, Takatsu, Takatsudo, Kiyotsu, Matsumoto, and Yaguchi. That's only four. The five areas of Hinamizawa, and then it listed four. Unless Hinamizawa counts as one. Oh, I see. The five areas of, and then the list starts. I'm an idiot. I thought it meant like these were subsections of Inamizawa. Never mind me. The submerged area includes 291 houses. Population, 1,251. <laughs> one elementary school, one middle school, one post office, one ag agricultural cooperative, one forestry department lumberyard, five shrines, two temples, and one fishery. <laughs> I like that word. Fishery. All of these communal cultural, agricultural areas, and places of worship will indefinitely be submerged at the bottom of the artificial lake basin. Forsaking the hundreds of years our ancestors poured... Uh, uh, forsaking the hundreds of years our ancestors poured their blood and sweat into this fertile, resource-rich land is just too painful to bear. All the residents having homes that were to be submerged banded together and created the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. The dam project was halted and petitions to alter the plan were circulated. The citizens sought peaceful negotiations, but the government and its puppet company XXXXX openly refused. Performing unspeakable heinous acts, they quashed the democratic actions of the villagers. But the villagers did not falter. Instead, they banded together even more closely and steeled their resolve to protect their homes to the death. To the death, eh? The construction of that frightening Hinamizawa Dam construction project is still stalled as of this day. Continuation. Wow. <laughs> Eyes, please. The villagers understand that the stalling was caused by sublime power through unity. And they understand that this fearsome plan has not yet been fully withdrawn. The Onigafuchi Defense Alliance has been dissolved after it did its part, but the feelings of unity it garnered have not yet been extinguished. As long as the passion resides in the hearts of the residents, they'll be able to confront whomever next decides to sink their homes into a lake basin. Keep doing that. Onigafuchi Defense Alliance Committee Chairman, Kiichiro Kimiyoshi. Hmm. Special tabloid report. Hit me up with that special tabloid report. Nightmare befalls the Hinamizawa Dam. Lynching and murder slash dismemberment. An X month of X day in XX prefecture at the Hinamizawa Dam construction worksite in Shishibone City. A bone chillingly gruesome murder slash dismemberment. Even though this case has shocked the archipelago, the police will give no details of the case. Exactly what happened at the Hinamizawa Dam. They probably didn't mean to kill him at first, but as the victim resisted by swinging around a shovel, the rest of the perpetrators armed themselves in return and it quickly escalated to a homicide. So said the affirmation investigator A. After this bloody tra tragedy was over, they were left with the body which nobody thought was alive. XX-san had tormented the suspects daily with his rough behavior. At first, it was meant to be payback. All the perpetrators were horrified by their deed, and one even turned himself into the police. It was the de facto leader of this group, XX, who suggested hiding the body. Reluctantly, at first, they soon began to think they did not wish to be caught. The construction site had numerous places to hide the body with six people. They were originally supposed to hide the body and leave the area, but the de facto leader feared that the consciences of the other five wouldn't be able to bear the burden and came up with a horrifying method to keep them from turning him into the police. He devised the heinous method of splitting up the body among them and making each of them responsible for hiding a single piece. XX had turned a simple manslaughter into a gruesome dismemberment and forcibly involved each perpetrator in order to keep a sense of unity between them. 
Each one participated. But what does this mean? Person A spoke out reluctantly. XX had ordered each and every one of them to dissect the piece for themselves. They were hesitant at first, but nobody refused. In for a penny, in for a pound, was what it meant. Thus, an unimaginable bloody ceremony began. The perpetrators wept and vomited as they performed the gruesome task. There was one person who stubbornly refused, but XX threatened them, saying, Nothing would change if someone else ended up dead, and he gave up on his objections. But XX's plane collapsed in the span of one night. XXX, who had refused to dissect, dissect the corpse up until the last moment, had broken down into tears at the hospital where he was being treated for an injury sustained during the scuffle, and confessed. The criminals were arrested, one after the other, but the de facto leader XX's whereabouts are still unknown. Also, the right arm hidden by XX is yet to be found. Despite an ongoing search, this horrible individual has so far managed to elude law enforcement. What could the police be doing? It appears that XX has said he was going to throw the body, right arm, into the marsh. XX's car was discovered abandoned near the marsh, but there were no clues to his whereabouts. XX didn't trust his companions. One cannot deny the possibility that he had expected his companions to confess to the police and used his car as a decoy. Of course, I doubt that theory. Since he has no car, one would expect him to have a limited area to which he could have escaped to. But within the station, there were rumors going around that he had accidentally slipped and drowned in the marsh when he went to throw the body. Throw away the body. To the locals, that marsh is believed to be bottomless. It's known as Onigafuji, the Ogre's Abyss. And it's said that the bottom of the marsh is connected to the hellish world of demons. The atrocious demon from hell that was XX. Could it be that he had returned to hell through the marsh? Yeah. Okay. The Zijin Dragon, bringer of luck and fortune, prosperous future, ladies sleeping in your arms, business success, promotions, ambition, protection from harm. Not just with pachinko and horse races, but business and even love, guaranteed or your money back. Zijin Dragon Bracelet DX, one piece, 27,800 yen. I like how it jumps straight into like a sales pitch right afterwards. That's tabloid for you. <laughs> anyway. That's, uh... A couple real interesting bits of information we just stumbled upon, eh? Damn. Ah, uh, well... I guess that's as good of a stopping point as any for today. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> Next time, uh, I guess we're going to be continuing from the next day. We're probably going to have a school day before we go to meet Rena in, in the, uh, the dump and fish out Colonel Sanders with her axe, but... Well, actually, I don't know the day of week. I don't know if they ever said... I don't know that one. Oh, thanks. I'm glad we're both in uh, agreement there. Thanks. <laughs> God damn it. Anyway, uh... I hope you guys are excited for next time where we uh, we continue and we're going to start up chapter 3. So I'll see you guys all then. Uh, make sure to leave a like or maybe hit that subscribe button if you want to keep watching. I'm going to be doing the... Uh, I've, I've fully decided that I'm going to commit and I'm going to play all the chapters of this game because I really want to and it's fun. So if you want to see that, just make sure that you hit that subscribe button for more. I'll talk to you guys all later. Have a beautiful rest of your night. Peace.